Hang on to, to the other yeah, side. Okay. So right now we're harvesting the inner bark of the tree. Uh, you don't do this on live trees. It will kill a live tree. You can harvest the outer bark easily on a live tree and it won't kill it. You'll just, it'll scar up. If you remove the inner bark, it will kill the tree. This is where the sap runs through. So when you actually tap the tree, the sap is running through this inner bark. So we're harvesting this. Uh, it's known as birch flower. So you can dry this, grind it up, and use it as a flour substitute. You just put it in a coffee grinder, grind it into a powder, use it 25% birch flour to 75% flour, make yourself some cookies, bread, cake, whatever you want. So sometimes out in the woods, you'll find down birch trees that are really rotten inside. The cool thing is, is birch bark is really resistant to decay. So the birch bark stays good, but the inside is rotten. Now, if you want a perfect circle of birch bark, easiest thing to do is pick one up and just pound out the inside a little bit. Find something to pound it out or just push it out, peel it out. And you can get perfect circles of birch bark while the inside is rotten away. And you can use these to just put a bottom on really quick. If you get a big enough one, you can make a quiver for your bow and arrow. And just like that, you have a nice piece of brown birch bark. Before paper came to America, uh, people in the Great Lakes area, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, around that area, they would record their histories and medicines and songs on birch bark. So not only was it baskets, not only was it storage containers, they would make scrolls that had stories on them. So they'd have pictures that would represent songs so they could look at that and be like, oh yeah, that's this song. So sort of like a monomic device to help them remember. Or they would have recipes for uh, healing plants or for sacred songs, sacred religious rites. And they were really protected. And the best thing is birch bark doesn't decompose really easy. So there's birch bark scrolls from 200, 400, 800 years ago that still have drawings and writings on them. So we've got this nice clean piece of bark. So what we can do is we can fold a nice little container out of it. And this container is a very basic container. Uh, you can practice with cardboard or paper. Um, it's a, a container that will hold water and you can boil uh, water in it. So now we've got this nice little rectangle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by taking one of these corners. And we're gonna kind of start a little bit of a yoga practice. I'm just gonna bend diagonally these nice little corners. I'm gonna do this pretty slow first. And I'm gonna just kind of take this corner, fold it up, it's right here, right like that. And I just did it nice and soft. I didn't want to bend anything too fast because you don't want down here where it folds to crack too much. So ideally it's not cracking at all and that's what's gonna make this be able to hold water. So we're gonna do this to all four sides. And one thing we can do, um, for the spruce roots, wherever I put those, one thing we can do is we can simply take the tip of our knife, spin it in a circle, not pushing hard at all. You just wanna spin it and drill it out. So I'm doing this very lightly. I'm not trying to stab through the bark and, uh, and you don't wanna stab yourself either. So I've got one hole here. I can open it back up. See the other hole right there. Drill that out pretty easy. And then make a little mark on the next piece of bark. Drill that out too. And then this, the root, I'll just tie a nice little knot in the end of it. Oh, sometimes they, they can crack when you're putting them in a knot, but that's all right. Just try again on the next section. And, uh, and it depends on the quality of your roots too. So, got a nice little knot in there. And I'll just 
trim the edge of this into a nice little point. And then I'll send it through my first hole, the knot facing on the inside, fold it back up, send it through my second hole, and through my third hole. And when I bring these all back together, start pulling this through. And then all I have to do for here is tie another knot. Okay. We'll leave it just like that for right now. So another thing you can do is if you just need a quick way to uh, keep this in place, you can just take a little stick and break it off and you'll usually have one little split in there. So you just use it just like a clothespin. And that'll hold that in place. And then um, if you do that to the other two sides, then you can focus on, uh, you can have a hand free and not having to hold it as much when you're drilling your holes through. And you could do more holes all the way around. You could sew a whole rim of birch bark around this container too. Uh, just to support it. Okay, so we've got one root stitched and then we got three just little holders. This is your basic container. If you needed to use it as is, you could just leave it as is. Um, what I want, would like to do is just make a few holes in these and then run a couple roots through it so that I can hang it uh, on my tap. If you've got a really thick root too, one cool thing about spruce roots is they split really well and you can use them for a lot of different sewing projects. Uh, so you just get a split right in the middle of it and then you start bending them away from each other evenly. And if it starts to run and get thinner on one side, you bend the thick side away from the thinner side and that helps get the split to start going center again. But if you can just do it evenly with both hands all the way down it, you can get nice split roots and you can keep splitting them and keep splitting them and they have a, a surprising amount of strength. Great for doing sewing bark projects with. We're gonna do another simple tap style that we can hang our fun little birch bark container off of and I'm gonna use this branch from this birch tree to make the tap real quick and uh, it's a cool little style. <sighs> Takes a little fork Like so, yep. And then I'll make the top part of it flat. And I'll even groove into it a little bit. Make a little channel going down this side a little bit. And I'm just gonna pick it out and make little tiny grooves. So the sap is gonna beat up on that and start to come down this. Then I'm gonna carve this guy so that it's a little bit angled down towards the tip. And I can finish the carve after I pound it in too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this up into the tree. The first thing I'm gonna do is just start drilling a little tiny hole directly into the tree. And I'm gonna go at an upwards angle. So we just need to get it in deep enough so when we pound in our piece of wood, it'll want to stay there and it'll stay there good enough to hold the weight of the container as it's filling with sap. Once I get my hole deep enough and I check to make sure it fits, then I'm going to put this V right in the bark. I'm going to angle it downwards and I'm going to get the V to stop right at this hole. And you want to make sure you're tapping all the way down to the wood. And then put in our tap. And so this concludes our little birch uh, peeling and uh, another little style of basket and tap. Um, so we have all the means with this tree right here to be able to collect our own sap and all we needed was a knife. And uh, you can boil water in a container like this. 
As long as there's water in the container, then the flames can be hitting it, but the water uh, keeps it from burning. Uh, eventually, after enough times of getting wet and drying, it gets a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner and eventually gets brittle and cracks. So um, it's pretty cool, pretty cool science experiment to try out and uh, a pretty cool survival skill and a pretty fun uh, process altogether. So thanks for joining us and I hope you have fun peeling. <laughs>